women wanting to be wives, but not even good girlfriends. How are you going to be qualified to be a wife when you're not even doing a good job as a girlfriend? That, it don't work like that. What job you go to and you get qualified for a position or get promoted to a position and you're not even qualified. In order to be a wife, you have to be a good girlfriend. You have to show and prove that you are qualified for that position by doing certain things that the man that you're dating would like for you to do. You have to be catering to him. You got to be a somewhat submissive to him. You have to be loving. Yeah, it's okay that you're in love with him, but you have to be lovable. You have to be a lovable person. You have to be understanding. You have to be supportive. You have to show all of these qualities in the beginning and through the course of the relationship. You do not get qualified for the position without taking the initiative throughout the relationship while y'all are dating. That boy. That boy. You are now watching Create a Steady Hustle with Liquid Cash. Cheers, what it is and what it ain't. It's yours truly, Liquid Cash. I need it all out the stash, a.k.a. Money Making Mitch. Hide ya, uh. And y'all watching the Create a Steady Hustle show, you dig? And you know I got my favorite host, Prince. Say what up? Say cheers. We about to shoot another episode, you dig? Yeah, it's about that time. It's been a minute, so, you know, we got to get back to it. You can't lay on me, nigga. My suit too clean for you to lay on me. You got to sit right here and just relax your mind, all right? Take your time. We're going to let this one be smooth and easy, all right? Pause. Listen, man. This episode is all about keeping it 100, all right? We're going to keep it all the way 1,000 with this episode. That, that explains why I got red on. You know what I mean? I'm feeling like Suge Knight, you dig, in 96. I got the all red suit on. You know, I'm feeling real godly. Even though I got red on, I still feel godly. Because that's how I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling good. I look good. I feel good. I smell good. Everything good. And like I said again, this is the Creative Steady Hustle Show. This episode is called Keeping It 100. We're going to be all the way live and direct. This show is about everything under the sun. But most importantly, this show is about giving back information, giving you motivation and inspiration that's going to take you to the location or where you need to be in life or where you want to be. We all got choices. Some people don't want to be nowhere. I want to be everywhere like the air. You dig? Anyway, like, you, like I said earlier, the drip report, we're going to get that out of the way early. Drip report, you see what I got on? I got on this all red Suge Knight suit with the gold buttons. Yeah, I handpicked these gold buttons myself. You know what I mean? Handpicked by yours truly. Uh, on the feet, I got Giuseppe's on the feet. You know what I mean? It's Giuseppe's loafers. I'm not really going to show these. I ain't really got to show these really because you know whatever's on the feet got to match the top because I'm on a red, black, and gold type vibe. So y'all already know the loafers is going to be fire. You know what I mean? As you can see, I got a few little trinkets, you know what I mean, to shine. You know, keep that little gold effect going on. This is something new. This is cool. You know what I mean? It's something I saw inside of the suit store. And um, yeah, man, it was my lucky day. I bought like four suits on Black Friday. You know what I mean? So it was Black Friday, so I took advantage of it. You know, I had to get fresh. I said, why buy one when I can buy four? Yeah, it's that type of vibe. And on the face, <laughs> yeah. These brand new uh, Bottega Veneta glasses. A lot of people be asking me, what kind of glasses you got on? What kind of shades are those? Everybody want, everybody want to know what shades I got on. These are Bottega Veneta, and I had to add it a little bit of my own customization to it. I switched the lens out, put a brand lens in there, and, you know, kept it fly, kept it real smooth. What's, what's up, Prince? Where you think you going? Yeah, you're going to do the whole show, nigga. So we had to put Prince in the all red, too, because he, he had to match me. So you, he got on the Cassius King hoodie, you know what I mean, that dog hoodie, you feel me? We're going we gonna to put, uh, put together... Uh, uh, cash is king, line, dog line, because, you know, Prince need his own, you know, drip too. So 
He don't want to wear nobody else brand but mine because it only makes sense. You feel me? So we're going to put a dog line together eventually and we're going to do something real cool for all the dog lovers out there. We're going to do something real cool for y'all. You know what I mean? We're going to put a little line together, cash apparel. It's going to be fly and it's going to be real uh, swaggerific, you dig? Uh, I ain't heard that word in a while, so I figure I use it. As you can see, man, you know, um, you know, niggas try to do what I do, but they just don't look good as me when they doing it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's for some reason, I don't know what it is. I think the clothes like me a little bit better. Every time I put something on, I feel like the clothes appreciate the person that's actually wearing the outfit and the material. So it just shine a little better. It just, it just has a better, it lays a little better on my skin. And my skin tone brings out the material a little better, man. So all you niggas that be trying to figure out where I shop at, uh, how I put this together, my swag, you got to understand, man, it's, 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 it's the person that's actually wearing the clothes. You feel me? And it's not what you wear. It's how you put it on. It's kind of like jewelry. You can be, I don't care if you can get VVS flawless diamonds. If your vibration and your energy is not vibrating flawless VVS diamonds, those diamonds are going to be dull on you. And when I put them on, they're going to shine bright like the sun. That's just how it goes. Your energy brings out the shine in the material that you decide to put on or anything that you decide to put on. It don't matter what you put on. Like I said, you can put on a bust down a Rolex watch and it could be flooded with diamonds. But if your energy is dull and gray, that diamond is not going to shine the way it needs to. You feel me? So, uh, yeah, it's not the clothes, man. It's about who's putting it on and, you know, who's wearing it. You feel me? And uh, so, like I said, this show is about uh, giving you some inf information, some inspiration, some motivation. And we're going to talk about everything under the sun, like I said. But I got to pay the bills. You know, I got to talk about my sponsors. Yes, Jackpot Mobility. If you in town in Las Vegas, you need a mobility scooter because you don't want your parents or your elderly grandmother to walk up and down the strip. She just want to ride smooth and, you know, just, just cruise through the strip, cruise in the casino, hit up Jackpot Mobility. The information will be in the description below. Make sure you hit them up. They're going to get you right. They're going to do what they need to do to make sure that she could be able to be mobile all around the Las Vegas strip location area, all right? Also, you in town with some friends, you partying, you trying to turn up, you just trying to get lit. It's more than 10 of y'all, and you want to get a Sprinter you know, van to diff move around, you want to be comfortable? Yeah, get you a Sprinter van, man, the Luxury Brothers party bus. They're going to get you right. They're going to take you where you need to be. They're going to pick you up on time. They're going to drop you up on time. They're going to take you anywhere you want to go, that's in the Las Vegas area. All you got to do is hit the button, hit the information in the description, and you're going to find where you need to be. And you're going to definitely be able to hit them up, and they're going to take you where you want to be. All right? All right? That's how we doing it, man. What's up, Prince? You good? You chilling? Huh? It's going to be a dope episode, man. We're going to just keep it all the way 1,000. All right? I'm celebrating 100,000 followers on my Instagram. I'm trying to get 100,000 on YouTube. I need y'all to subscribe. Listen, man, listen, listen. Check this out. This is a give and take relationship. If you like the content that I'm producing, you like the information that you're receiving, do me a small little minor favor. All you got to do is subscribe. That's it. And share the content of well and like and leave a comment. That's it. If you like the information, you like the content, I need you to subscribe. I need you to share. I need you to show some support. It's a give and take relationship. If you getting any value from my information, please do that for me, all right? Because that's going to keep me motivated. That's going to keep me inspired to do more episodes and give you more information. Because if I feel like this is a one-sided relationship, then I'm going to start to feel like, you know what? Y'all taking advantage of me, man. You feel me? Y'all don't want to take advantage of me. Y'all like what I'm giving y'all. Y'all like what I'm bringing to the table, right? So I'm going to feel like y'all taking advantage. So I'm going to need you to participate and just show a little bit of love, all right? I know you're enjoying the episode, 
but I want y'all to take five seconds out your day. Just five seconds. Hold on. We're going to get back to it. I know it's getting juicy and we talking some real shit. You dig? But listen, I want y'all to check out my book, The Power of Thought. You can think your way to a rich and prosperous life. Change your mind and you can change your life. It's just that simple. I want y'all to check out my book, man, on www.thepowerofthought.shop. Check it out. Click the link below. Support your boy. Written by yours truly, Liquid Cash. Now get back to the episode. Cheers. I'm drinking my ginger tea, man. And I got this black little scarf just to make sure that it don't drip on this red, this beautiful, beautiful red suit that looks so good on me. You know what I mean? Ladies, how do I look? Ladies, I want to, listen, man, leave in the comments. Let me know how do I look? What's going on, man? Am I wearing it right? Is it, is it looking nice on me? I need y'all to tell me, ladies. You feel me? Because you know these niggas be hating. These niggas ain't gonna tell you you look fly. Cause you know, they ain't man enough to tell another man, yo, you look good in that suit, man. Know what I mean? All my real niggas gonna say, yeah, you look good in that suit, man. You look real nice, man. Keep it up. All the fake niggas is gonna hate and be like, oh, this nigga trying to be Shig Knight 96. You know, the haters gonna come up with some slick shit to say. I love the comments though. I don't care what you say, long as you're saying something, it's all love. You dig? But ladies, like I said again, leave in the comment, let me know how I look. You know, we're going to continue to be fly. Every time I'm fly on this particular show, I feel good. I give you good information. And I, I just feel like the energy is just it, just, it just, it just feels right. You feel me? And it's all about the energy. Y'all know I always say everything is frequency, vibration, and energy, all right? Prince is just laying down. He just, he just cooling. He just laying down. He like, fuck it. He don't like cameras at all. But that's fine. I'm going to do all the talking for the both of us. Oh, yeah, I got my tea and I got some water as well. You know what I'm saying? I got a little bit of everything. I got the water and I got tea. You know, uh, everything got to match. As you can see, the Versace teacup matched the outfit. This cup that I got, this, this is all the way from, um, I think I got this from Italy. This was a gift all the way from Italy. So, yeah, you know, it matches what I got on as well. You dig? Thank you for the gift, whoever gave me this. I forgot it. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know who you are. Where you going, boy? Where you think you going, man? Where you going? Why you wanna, why you wanna sit on my suit? Why you wanna do that? Why you wanna sit on my suit? You know you wrong for sitting on my suit. Come on, man. No, 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 you not going to sit on my suit, wrinkle my motherfucking suit. I spent goddamn 30 minutes getting this shit all the way right, man. Come on, man. How dare you sit on my suit like that, man? Yeah, lay your head right there and just relax, okay? It's fine. You can lay your head right. Yeah, you can relax. Just relax. You want to get rubbed? Man, this dog is spoiled as a mother sucker. This nigga want to get rubbed. He want to get pat. He, wanna, he just, he just want to show affection. Dogs understand how to win your love over just by giving you love. Dogs can get anything in the world. They don't have to work for it. They can get anything in the world just by giving you love. And that's some of you, you know, some of you ladies out there, some of you fellas out there need to understand and learn a thing or two from dogs that all you got to do is give love back and you're going to get it back in return. That's it. Every other animal have to hunt for their food. They got to work. They got to put in that, you know, blood, sweat, and tears to get what they want, all a dog has to do is show you love and affection, and you're going to give the dog food, shelter, clothing, anything the dog wants and need, you're going to provide that for him, and that's all he's doing for you, all right? So, yeah, take a little bit of, you know, take some, <laughs> some lessons from your dog, all right? Show more love, give a little bit more love, and everything is going to be fine, all right? Like I said, again, this episode is all about keeping it 100. I'm celebrating 100,000 followers on my Instagram. Yeah, you know, that's, a, that's an accomplishment for me because when I started this podcast, I had about 24,000 followers. So in the space of three months, I went up to 100,000. Right now, as we record, it's over 100,000. And uh, we're going to take it all the way to 200,000. Why? Because it ain't no limit. We don't stop. We're going to take it all the way to the tippy top. You feel me? 
Yeah, man. Yeah, that's where we're going, all the way to the top. And I'm going to need you to help me get there. How do you help me get there? Like I said, like, subscribe, and comment. Don't be a hater. Don't watch the video. I know some of y'all watch on your TV. Yeah, that's cool. I get it. You watch it on your TV. Listen, after you finish watching it on your TV, go to your phone and you leave a comment and definitely let me know what you think. And also subscribe to the channel. Don't just watch it. Don't sh just watch it. Man, you got to share it and subscribe, all right? I'm going to stress that because we're trying to get this YouTube channel to do numbers, okay? And I'm going to need your help in order to make that happen. So, like I said again, we're going to keep it all the way 100. And we're going to start off with no game, no gimmicks. We're going to let you know off top. For the niggas that want to know, my hair is real. Yes, 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 yes. For you fuck niggas that want to know, <laughs> yes, my hair is real. It's not a motherfucking toupee. It's not a man wig. I've never seen a man wig with 360 waves. You dig? For all you fuck niggas out there that's wondering and thinking and leaving comments under my motherfucking uh, 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 Instagram page, YouTube channel, and talking about I can't get past this toupee, you fuck nigga, my hair is real. All you have to do is be a man about it, ask me how I got it done, how, it's, how I'm able to have these waves like this, what's my routine, what's the regimen, give me the secret, give me the sauce on how to get it done. And then maybe I would give one of you niggas, you know what I mean, the 10 commandments on how to get your shit spinning like mine's. You dig? It's simple. Now, it's not simple now. No, 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 no. Hold up. It's not simple, but it's easy. You just got to be dedicated. You got to be motivated. And you got to be disciplined. You got to brush an hour or 30, from 30 to 30 minutes to an hour in the morning when you wake up. 30 minutes to an hour at night. Constantly brushing. And you need a mirror while you're brushing. So you're brushing with... Two mirrors, you, one mirror that you're looking in that's on the wall and another mirror in your hand so you can pay attention to your brush patterns. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you niggas no more, man. I'm not giving you niggas no more. Y'all know what it is. If y'all want some more information on how to get your shit spinning like mine, all you got to do is hit me in the DM. You know what I mean? It's going to cost a fee now. We're not going to give you all the game for free. It's going to cost a fee. I, I know you niggas like free shit. Half of you niggas love free shit, but it's going to cost you. You dig? We're not going to just give you all the game for free. I'm already recording this episode, and I'm giving it to you. This, I gave you enough for free. So anything else, I'm charging for it. I just wanted to get that out the way. Another thing, for you niggas that think I'm wearing makeup, listen, man. Hold up. Let me drink my tea for this one. For you fuck niggas that think I'm wearing makeup. Ladies, pardon me for a second. We got to address these fuck niggas real quick. You know what I'm saying? We got to do it. <sighs> Listen to me, man. It's good lighting. All right? My face is shining like this because God blessed me with a beautiful skin tone. And it's good lighting. Right? And I get facials. Let me tell you a story. Check this out. I'm hustling. In New York City, young, dumb, full of calm, I'm making moves, I'm breaking rules, I'm doing what I need to do to get to where I need to go. Me and the homies, we in towns, uh, we in about, no, nah, Times Square, and in the front of the Virgin Record Store. This is when they had the Virgin Record Store in Times Square, and everybody would go there to buy their new albums. This is before your time, nigga. You know what I mean? This is back when they had CDs. You dig? They still selling CDs out there. Yeah, I was on the block on Times Square selling CDs with the Times Square Hustlers. Yeah, I was pushing my motherfucking music out there on the streets. Yeah, hand in hand. All right? And one day we out there, we cooling, we chilling. We working, we hustling. I just bust a sale. Just hit a Japanese over the head for $100 for one of my CDs. Matter of fact, I think that day I got $300 from a Japanese for one of my CDs. Yes, 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 yes. I got $300 for one of my CDs. Because, you know, the Japanese don't know the difference between a dollar and a hundred dollars. But we're going to talk about that on another note. You dig? We're not going to incriminate ourselves. But yes, 
They didn't know $100 from a dollar. So, yeah, we was out there finessing and we was doing what we needed to do. You dig? To all the Japanese that we took advantage of, I apologize. Konnichiwa. You dig? <laughs> but listen, all right, on this particular day, an SUV pulled up to the uh, Virgin Mega Store, right? And um, the driver came out, opened the door. And guess who hopped out of the SUV? Russell Simmons. Yeah, Russell Simmons hopped out of the SUV, went into the Virgin Record Store to go buy an album. But while everybody was trying to get an autograph or sell Russell Simmons a CD or give him a CD, I was kind of like stunned and I don't know if this is the right word, but I was captivated, pause, by his skin tone. And I was like, how the fuck this nigga's glowing like that? I was like, why is this nigga glowing? All right? and, I, and Russell Simmons, of course, he's an ugly guy. He's not attractive. I'm not, I'm not attracted to him in no motherfucking way. But in my mind, I'm thinking in, his, I'm thinking in my mind, like, why is this nigga's skin glowing? And I said to myself, damn, this must, this must be how you look when you got money. You know, when you got money, that's probably shit, how you look when you got money. So I, fig I figured when I get some money... I was going to figure out how to get my skin glowing, all right? So what I did, I started investing in myself in that way. I started going to estheticians, getting facials. I started, for one, I stopped washing my face with Irish Spring. Yeah, I used to wash my face with Irish Spring. Yeah, I was one of you niggas. Yep, I, I was one of you niggas. I was washing my face with the same goddamn soap I took a shower with. I didn't know no better. I wasn't putting on no motherfucking moisturizer. I wasn't doing none of that shit. I had oily skin anyway, so I figured my shit was going to be shiny and oily by the time I reached the bus stop. I had to walk to the bus stop anyway. That's Like I said, I ain't had no money. I was Everything was funny. I ain't had no money. You dig? So anyway, so I didn't put no moisturizer on. We didn't put no uh, vitamin C serum on or nothing like that on my face. I didn't give a shit. I just washed my face with Irish Spring, went about my goddamn day. And a lot of you niggas are still doing that shit. A lot of you niggas are still operating in that space. You're not investing in your skin tone and how you look and what you, what you put on your face and, you know, your regimen and your routine. I got a mean skin routine. If you need that routine as well, hit me in the DM because a lot of you niggas be secretly want these information, but instead of asking me, you rather say some dumb shit like I got on makeup. No, nigga, I invest in my skin care. I go get a facial at least once to twice a month. And when I go home, I have a routine in the morning and a routine before I go to bed. All right? It's just that simple. A lot of you niggas is not investing in your skincare. That's why you don't glow like this. And you eating bullshit too. So what shows on the ends, what shows on the outside is because what's going on in the inside. If you're not glowing on the outside, that's because you're putting the wrong things in your body that's not causing you to glow the way you need to. All right? So I also have a routine of juice that I drink every day as well to keep the inside you know, glowing as well and functioning the way I needed to function. So it's all these subtle routine that I do in order for my skin and my hair to look immaculate the way it does. And I know you jealous and I know you mad, but it's okay. You can get just like me. All you have to do it's hit me in a DM and I might tell you how to get it done. But all that hating under the comments and speculating and uh, having your own suggestions and assumptions, you're wrong on all of those. Good lighting, good skin care. Invest in yourself. Treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. All right? <laughs> like I said again, this is going to be a good episode. We're going to keep it all the way 100. All right? Ladies. Time to get on y'all real quick. Ladies, I got to let y'all know. You can't handle the truth. Yes, ladies, y'all cannot handle the truth. Y'all are too emotional. Telling a woman the truth is like a double-edged sword. Either way you slice it, you're going to get cut. 
We interrupt this episode for a quick, short commercial break. I know y'all enjoying the episode, but listen, man. Y'all know we got to pay the bills. Y'all now we coming. We doing quality over quantity. Y'all loving what I'm saying. So y'all got to support the platform. And how you do that? Liquidcash.com. Y'all see what I got on the site? Yeah, this is the new Snapbacks trucker hats we got, man. That uh, Halloween orange fire. Pumpkin orange. This is Come on, man. This is undeniable, baby. This is something you definitely need in your life. You dig? Also, we got that, huh, yeah, new t-shirts we just dropped. They ain't on the site yet, but by the time you see this, this is definitely going to be on the site. It's that cash is king, black tee with the logo on the front, fire. You put this on with the right chain, right pants, and some all-white Air Force Ones, you fresh to that. Y'all see I got on that, ah, uh, that windbreaker. Yeah, the all red joint with the black and the white. Yeah, I'm fly. Y'all know how I'm doing it, baby. Also, but check this out. We also got the blue one, too. Yeah. We got the blue, white, and black with the cash is king on the back. Y'all see how we coming, man. Fly shit only, man. Fly shit only. And you know I got the pants to match. You know I can't do it without the pants to match. Come on, man. We got to have the cash is king pants. You feel me? Windbreaker. Right in time for the season, baby. Also, you know I stay with drip, baby. <laughs> that cash apparel hoodie. Red. We got it in red. We got it in tan and olive green print. Y'all see how we go? Hey, listen, man. Come on, man. Stop playing with me, man. Stop playing with me, man. Stop playing with me, man. And we got that cash is king hoodie, huh? You feel me? It's hoodie season. That true blue. That New York Yankee blue. You know what I mean? You know, you put this on with a New York Yankee fitted hat, light blue jeans, all white Air Force Ones. It's undeniable, man. I'm going to show y'all niggas how to get fresh, and you ain't got to break the bank. Go on liquidcast.com and shop with your boy. Now, back to the episode. Cheers. Because women are emotional. And guys, you got to remember this. Once you tell her the truth, She's going to say she respect it. She just wants you to tell her the truth and be honest and open with her. But you got to know, once you tell the woman the truth from the beginning, it's going to interfere on how she moves with you throughout the course of the relationship. Yeah, you might not get her full trust. You might not get her full attention. You might even not get her full love and affection. All right? These are things that's going to happen because now she's going to, have a guard up. She had a, she had a guard up before she even met you. That's just what's going to happen. She had a guard up from the beginning y'all met. But now, she's going to put that guard up a little bit higher. <laughs> and it's going to be a little bit more challenging to cut through the surface. So telling a woman the truth, you got to understand, it's like giving Superman kryptonite. You're killing yourself. That's why it takes a real man to lead with the truth. Because now you are so secure in your being and you're so secure in your, with yourself that it doesn't matter whether she stays with you or she puts a guard up or let the guard down. It doesn't matter to you because your life is secure. You're moving on an uphill trajectory. You don't care if she's in your life or not. You just that confident in yourself. You feel like you're going to find another one if she doesn't decide to be with you anyway. So it doesn't matter. You're going to tell her the truth. You're going to keep it all the way 1,000 with her because whether she decides to be with you or not, your bills are still going to get paid. The sun is still going to shine. The moon is still going to glow at night. Nothing changes in your life. So it takes a man to leave with the truth. But guys, for you niggas that's trying to find somewhere to live, for you niggas that's trying to shack up in women's houses, and that's trying to, here, yeah, get your shit together, yeah, you might have to tell a little white lie here and there in order to find somewhere to sleep at at night. It's getting a little cold right now, so ladies, y'all got to beware. A lot of niggas going to be lying. You know them winters in New York, it's brutal. Y'all know them winters in Chicago, they don't call it Windy City for no reason. It's brutal. And all these cold states, yeah, yeah, and all these cold states, these niggas going to be lying like a motherfucker. Y'all got to be ready for it. 
And all these cold states, these niggas going to be telling y'all a bunch of white lies because they want somewhere to live and somewhere to rest their head. All right? So y'all got to be on point. So, fellas, leave with the truth. Leave with the truth. Know what I mean? And I ain't knocking niggas that's lying because women are lying too. Don't get it fucked up. They lying too. They ain't the only one with, they ain't the only one with shelter. Some of these women looking for shelter as well. Some of these women don't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. And they looking for a place to stay. So they're going to tell you a lie too. And they're going to present themselves to be holier than thou. But really deep down on the low, she's a slut. And you might not know because you're not from the state or the city she's from. She came from somewhere else. Start off a new life, a new leaf, a new beginning. And you know nothing about her. But back at home... She is the local hood rat. You feel me? Yeah, it goes down. It gets real brutal out here. That's why you got to know your partner. You got to know who you're dealing with. So you got to leave with the truth. Anything else is uncivilized. That's why it takes a real man to leave with the truth. You can't be a boy out here thinking you got it all together, but you don't. You lying and you cheating and you manipulating. You confusing women. They don't understand you. You don't understand them. I love to talk about the problems and then go to the solution at the end. A lot of you niggas are impregnating these women and leaving them to be the baby mother and the baby father. Y'all not living up to y'all responsibility. A lot of you niggas got to stop that. Reason why you got to stop it is because these same women are in my DM trying to get with me. Now, I don't got no kids, none at all. And at this particular time in my life, I'm not really trying to be a stepdaddy. Not saying that I wouldn't, but I'm not trying to be a stepdaddy. So a lot of you niggas need to start taking care of your kids. Stop leaving these women to fend for themselves. You and her lay down and produce a child. Be a man and take care of your responsibilities as a man. Because a woman cannot raise a man. That's why a lot of these little kids out here are emotional and feminine. And they got bitch made ways. So a lot of these grown ass men, they grow up being bitch made. Because... They was raised by a woman. They are, they're very emotional. They become abusive against women. And they start doing all kind of sucker shit. And they muddy in the waters. And it's hard to tell the difference between a real man and a bitch made nigga. Now I mean, I could tell the difference, but the wim- for the women out there, it's hard for them to tell the difference. So what happens is that the women don't know who to judge and who to decipher, who to be with, who not to be with. She can't tell who's real, who's fake. It's hard for them to really understand and judge and make a a rational decision because there's so many of you niggas out here with bitch-made qualities. You dig? Take care of your responsibilities. Be a man. That do what what I say, not as I do mentality, it ain't going to cut it. That ain't going to, you're not going to be able to laugh. Do that for too long. You're going to have to eventually stand on your principles, be a man, and lead with integrity. If you're not meeting and greeting that woman with positivity and being honest and open, then all you're doing is killing time. So what you need to do is approach any female or any person that you're doing business with or in a relationship with, with integrity. Be honest, be open. Be cool about it. Be smooth about it. But I understand why a lot of you niggas lie. Because y'all want pussy. That's what it is. It's the power of the pussy. The P-U-S-S-Y. So niggas gonna lie just to get that. But why would you let vagina determine your integrity and how real you're gonna be? You should never let vagina have that much control over you. I keep on saying this, guys. Y'all have to lead with integrity. Take care of your responsibilities. Be a man. If you got a child out there, matter of fact, 
I had this conversation one time with someone as well. They had a, they recently found out that they had a 15 year old daughter and the daughter ended up reaching out to this particular person. And it was kind of strange for him because he was like stunned and taken away by it because he thought the mother had an abortion. Come to find out, he was married, she was dating someone at the time, he was dealing with her because she worked at the job where he was working at. They was dealing with each other on the side. They end up, you know, hooking up, having a baby. Well, she ended up getting pregnant. Sorry, let me back up. She ended up getting pregnant, right? He told her to have an abortion. She said she's going to take care of it. So he went, you know, living his life, doing what he was doing. They didn't end up messing around with each other no more. So, because he's married, he, he had to cut that off because the relationship was getting too sticky. Baby's getting involved, you know, she getting pregnant and all that. She, he, wanted to be, he wanted to stand clear away from that. So anyway, 15 years later, he comes and find out that she did not abort the baby. She ended up giving the child to the boyfriend that, she was actually dating at the time. So the child grew up thinking that the boyfriend was her father. So when the boyfriend ended up passing away through, you know, health problem, illness, he ended up dying. Her little brother and her was in a fight. They got in an argument. The little brother said, that's why my daddy ain't your daddy. And that led the child, the daughter, to be more curious about who's her father, she went to the mother, asked the mother, hey, is that true? Is, is it true that, you know, that person was not her father? And then the mother finally came out and said, yes, it is true, after 15 years. Now, this shit happens a lot of times in the hood. This happens all the time. So being a curious child, she wanted to find her father. And that's what she ended up doing. She ended up finding her father. So she got in contact with the sisters at first. The sisters got in contact with the father. They all spoke on a three-way, and everything came to the light. Now, when I was having this particular conversation with the father of this particular girl, I was telling him that he needed to take care of his daughter, you know, I understand that, you know, 15 years went by, you don't really know her, she don't really know you, but it's important that you be a part of her life because now you know. See, before you didn't know, so yeah, it's okay. You didn't have to stand up on no business because you didn't know. Now you got to stand on business because now you know. And he broke it down to me like this. He said, whether, whether I'm in that kid's Life or not, what is destined is going to be destined. Her destiny is going to be what it's going to be. So whether his defense was whether I'm in that child's life or not, it's not going to change how this child is going to be when she grows up. And yeah, I understand where he was coming from. I understand how he felt. But he, to me, he was trying to run from responsibility because you could say, I get this concept, meaning he basically was saying, you can switch the journey, but where you're going to end up is where you're going to end up. I don't care if you go right, left, up or down, your destiny is your destiny and you can't change your destiny. You can change the route you take, but you can't change your destiny. And I get what he was trying to say, but at the end of the motherfucking day, you as a man need to take your responsibility. Where she ends up in life is not your motherfucking concern. But what you do from here on out is going to make a difference in her life. Yeah, she might end up where she, where she want to end up. You might not be able to control if she goes to college or not. You might not be able to control that, but you could control if she eats on Sunday or eats on Friday or she has a place to live at or she has a place to stay or she can afford to go to college. Do you have the money to 
help her finance these things that she may want to do. You have that control. Now, because there's a lot of men that are in their daughter's life and their daughters end up doing a lot of different things that they didn't want, you know, their parents didn't want them to do, but that's not your business. While she is a teenager, you need to step up as a man and provide. Whether that's knowledge, whether it's money, whether it's information, whether it's just your presence. Just your presence can be enough in a, in a child's life. That's important. Very important. Just having your, 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 your mother or your father there is very important. I didn't have my mother in my life, so I sympathize with any child that grew up without a, you know, a parent in the household. So I'm always advocating for men to go out there, find out or find where your child or your, 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 your daughter or your son is at and be an uh, important force in their life, important figure in their life. Doesn't matter where they end up for the rest of their life. You, you're not concerned with that. She could be with a gangbanger. She could be dating a drug dealer. She could be dating whoever she wants to date. But while she's a teenager, while she has your blood, you need to take care of your responsibilities, be a man. See, that's why I don't have no kids right now. Everybody be asking me, do you got kids? And why you don't have no kids? That's why I don't have no kids. I don't have no kids because for me to have a child with someone, the mother has to actually be qualified to be a mom. I have to see these traits in the beginning. I'm not going to be one of those niggas to meet a female, like them, dick them down, and just because I like the way she scrambles some eggs, you know, I got, I got, I got to talk about some eggs. I like talking about eggs. Uh, pause. Uh, scramble some eggs, and she know how to give good head, I'm going to impregnate her. Nah, you got to have certain qualities that I, I feel is motherly, and that you should have in order to be a good mother. I got to see it in the beginning. I'm not going to promote you to a position. And I don't think you qualified. And that leads me to this particular topic. Women wanting to be wives, but not even good girlfriends. How are you going to be qualified to be a wife when you're not even doing a good job as a girlfriend? That, it don't work like that. What job you go to and you get qualified for a position or get promoted to a position and you're not even qualified. In order to be a wife, you have to be a good girlfriend. You have to show and prove that you are qualified for that position by doing certain things that the man that you're dating would like for you to do. You have to be catering to him. You got to be a somewhat submissive to him. You have to be loving. Yeah, it's okay that you're in love with him, but you have to be lovable. You have to be a lovable person. You have to be understanding. You have to be supportive. You have to show all of these qualities in the beginning and through the course of the relationship. You do not get qualified for the position without taking the initiative throughout the relationship while y'all are dating or together in an exclusive relationship, then the man sees that you're qualified. It's just like working a job. It's the same thing. You do not get hired and promoted in the same year without taking initiative and doing more than what you pay for. See, just like the man that's at work doing just enough not to get fired, you are doing just enough not to get dumped. So that's why niggas be with y'all for 10 years and never offer to marry y'all at all. They can be with you for 10 years and never offer their hand in marriage because you're doing just enough not to get dumped. You got to do a little bit extra. Take the initiative. Trust me, it's going to be worth it in the end if you're dealing with the right man and, that, and that's, that's what you want in your life. You want to get married, you're going to have to do a little bit more 
just so he can see that you qualify for that position. I'm giving y'all some real game, ladies. Take, take, my, take my advice. Trust me. Do a little bit more than the average female is willing to do. Guys look at that and they store that in their memory bank and they say, you know what? She is qualified. Because we have these conversations with our fellas. You know, fellas, they talk amongst each other and they had that conversation with their homeboys and we talk about what girl is qualified for whatever position. You know what I mean? If they dating someone at the time exclusively, you know, the nigga's going to talk about you with another man. He's going to discuss it with his homeboy, his right-hand man. And he's going to let his right-hand man if, know if you qualified to get married or you qualified to be whatever in his life. Just the way you and your friends gossip and talk, that's the same thing with men. We don't call it gossiping. We just call it having a conversation. And you may come up in that conversation. So, ladies, you have to be willing to take the initiative and do a little bit more in order to be qualified for that wife position. All right? So, I know I'm bouncing all over the place, but it, everything is lining up right where it needs to be. Like I said again, this is one of the reasons why I don't have no kids. Because I haven't met a woman to show me that she's qualified to be a mother. Because... I'm not going to be one of those guys that's going to be at the courthouse dealing with child support, dealing with a, 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 a woman trying to take my kid away from me. I'm going to be one of those fathers that's in his kid's life all the way through for the rest of my life. I know what I bring to the table. I know what I'm willing to do for my child once one appears or I have one with a woman. I know I'm going to be there in every way I can. and There's nothing that's going to keep me away from my child. And I don't care what happens. That's how I'm bringing it. That's how I'm coming. I'm going to be there through thick and thin. My child can't do no wrong in my eyes. And if I have a daughter, that's even better. She's going to be spoiled. She ain't going to need no niggas. None of you bum-ass niggas out there. Yeah, she's going to just need me. She's going to have that daddy's love. If I have a son, he's going to be gamed up. My daughter going to be gamed up too as well. You dig? Both of them going to be game. I'm going I'm to give them the rules and the regulations on how to navigate through life. I'm going to teach them how to be, do, and have anything they want. So I know what I bring to the table. I'm one of those, I'm going to be one of those parents that you can't feed my child McDonald's. You're not going to be able, I don't care what you eat, you're not going to give my child McDonald's. My child is going to have the best. That's just how I'm bringing it. So that's why I ain't have no kids yet. I, need to, I want to find a woman that's qualified for that. When I'm ready for that. I'm not ready for that right now. That's not where I'm... I'm not saying I'm ready for that, ladies. Ladies, relax. Relax. I'm not ready to have no kids yet. Y'all got to take it easy. I'm just saying... That's one of the reasons I don't have any. It's because... You know... But, I mean... I did have a... <sighs> I did have a uh, situation where I almost had a child early. I did. I did. I ain't going to lie. I did. Y'all want to hear the story? Y'all want to hear about it? All right, fuck it. I'll tell y'all about it. All right, you sure? <sighs> Damn. Okay, okay. I'll tell y'all about it. Um, again. Remember that time I told y'all about the girl I was dating that was a Leo that lived in Far Rockaway and I said I cheated on her? Well, uh, I got a confession to make. I cheated on her with a cousin, all right? So, yeah, I was a foul nigga back in the day. I was a foul motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't give a fuck. I was heartless. I didn't care. I was ruthless. <sighs> I was ruthless. So anyway, I cheated on her, I cheated on her with a cousin, right? A cousin lived in PA. She would come down... Every weekend to visit her cousin, you know, which was the girl I was dating. And she, you know, she was cute. She was my type. She was light skinned, black hair, beautiful. Um, she was just what I like, my flavor. You feel me? And obviously my, fl my flavor has changed since then. I still love light skinned women, but I love brown skinned women as well. So I don't want no discriminating around here. I like white, brown skin, polka dot, purple. I don't give a fuck. As long as you're beautiful and you're a female, I'm interested. So anyway, 
she was a beautiful, um, light-skinned, black female. She might have been mixed with a little bit of Puerto Rican in her. So she would come over every weekend. We end up, you know, liking each other. And the funny thing about it is that the girl that I was actually dating, her cousin, was cool with me and her seeing each other. She never really brought it up. She kind of was okay with it. So I was in a polygamous relationship before I even knew what polygamy meant. Before I even knew what polygamy meant. I hope I said it right. But anyway, before I knew what polygamy was. So yeah, I was in a polygamy relationship, but not openly. I was just on the side messing with the cousin while I'm dealing with this one, but I only would mess with the cousin on the weekends when she came over. And the like I said, she knew about it, and she never brought it up. She, I felt like she was cool with it, and I never brought it up because I felt like, why would I bring it up, all right? So anyway, we have in our relations, and we enjoying that, and I was purposely trying to get her pregnant, and we was purposely trying to have a baby together, and it was going good, man. You know, we was, we was really doing our thing, you feel me? I was definitely shooting that club up, most definitely. I was like Shine, shooting the motherfucking club up with him and Diddy. Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, that was me. That was me, yeah, your boy was out there. I was wild, and I was definitely having a good motherfucking time. And um, I'm shooting the club up. I'm trying to get her pregnant. Months go by. She ended up being pregnant. Yes. It's a glorious day. I'm about to have a kid. About to have a child on the way. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. At this time, I'm damn near about, I think I was about, I forgot how old I was, but I was young. Anyway, so she ended up getting pregnant. And I'm happy about this. Mind you, I said she lived in Pennsylvania, PA. So I used to take the bus to Islandtown, Pennsylvania, you know, Venya, every other weekend just to go check on her and see how she's doing. She would come down to Far Rockaway, Queens at the time. And she would check, and I, I would check on her. Now, through this whole time, I'm saying, yo, the, the, the child got to be a junior because we really preparing for this. And I'm letting her know, yo, the kid got to be a junior. I don't, I, don't, I don't care if we have a boy or we have a girl. It got to be a junior. Yeah, I don't, I don't give a fuck. You dig? That's my mentality at the time. She's like, no, the child is not going to be a junior. We going back and forth. She arguing with me. We beefing and shit. She like, nah, the child ain't going to be a junior. I'm like, oh, my God, this girl is stressful. So the whole nine months of this pregnancy, we arguing about what the, what the child's name is going to be. She ended up having, you know, uh, it ended up being a boy. So, you know, rightfully, I wanted the child to be named after me. So fast forward. She ends up going through labor. And... I'm all the way in Far Rockaway, Queens. I'm hustling in the streets. I jumped on the bus. I went to Islandtown, Pennsylvania, went to the hospital. The baby's already, you know, born. He's in the, you know, the carriage or whatever they put the babies in once the child is born and they take it away from the moms. So they tell me to go in the room to go look at the kid. I go in the room to go check the kid out. It's a beautiful boy. He had jet black hair. Um, it's light skin, of course, uh, and I'm not light skin, by the way. The light skin came from her. Anyway, light skin, of course. I look at the child, and he looked like me, but for some reason, deep in my heart, I felt like it wasn't my kid. You know what I mean? I just felt like it wasn't mine. Some, for some reason, I don't know why. It was just the energy. I just felt like it was not mine. So you know I'm a strong believer in uh, frequency, vibration, and energy. At this time, I knew nothing about that. But I just felt that the energy, there wasn't a connection. Anyway, long story short, she ended up naming the child after me. I'm end up signing for the child and everything. And everything is going smooth. But I just felt in my heart that this wasn't my kid. And it was a little minor speculation of her cheating and, you know, it might be somebody else's kid. I heard through that, I heard through the grapevine that might be a possibility. And um, yeah, this, this story uh, kind of, you know, gets me a little bit, I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> but listen, this story kind of, you know, is real. So I'm trying to be as transparent with y'all as possible. You feel me? So like I was saying, man, it was through the grapevine where I heard that she was possibly dating someone else 
the same time she was messing with me. So weeks went by, I heard she called me. I'm at the other girl crib, the cousin, like I was dating, really. I was at her crib and she called me, you know, the girl that I had a baby with, you know, uh, technically, quote unquote, baby with. She called me and she told me she took a paternity test and the child wasn't mine. It was someone else on. Now, naturally, when I heard that, an average person would probably be um, fucked up about that. They'd, they'd probably be hurt inside. You know, the average person, they'd be fucked up and uh, they would have felt some type of way about it. But I'd be lying if I, if I, if I, if I did. If I felt that type of way, I I'd be lying if I said that. Nah, it was the happiest motherfucking day of my life. That was, I was jumping for motherfucking joy when I found out that child was not mine because she was stressful. She was super duper stressful. I was like, oh my God, you can imagine the shit I'm about to go through with her right now. Oh, it's going to be one of them, it's going to be one of those type of relationships that most niggas fear. And I already knew it was going to be. So when she told me that the kid was in mine, man, man, I jumped for joy, man. It was one of the happiest days of my life. Ain't no day could compete with that day ever. That day is still, hands down, one of the happiest days of my life. So don't feel bad for me. Don't feel sad for me. That was the happiest day of my motherfucking life. Besides me getting my citizenship. Now, my citizenship was a very glorious day. So besides me getting my citizenship, that was one of the happiest days of my life when I found out that that child was not mine and she was not going to be my baby mother. Because you know what? She did cheat on me. I did find out through the grapevine. And the baby was that other nigga on. Even though I nutted it and shooting that club a hundred times, it didn't matter. I guess he shot the club up first. And the baby ended up being his. Well, kudos to you, nigga. <laughs> Cheers. I know that story's a little long, but it's okay. I had to tell y'all, you know, it is what it is. And I'm not fucked up about it. I feel good about it. Don't feel sorry for me, man. Y'all don't be boo-hooing for me. That just lets you know how foul uh, 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 women are and men are. Because I was foul in that situation anyway, getting her pregnant and I was dating her cousin. So I was a foul ass nigga. So you know, that's why I say the energy you put out, you get back in return. I put out that bad energy by fucking with her cousin. I got it back. She ended up sleeping with another nigga and ended up being pregnant. I got it damn near worse. Yeah, the typical nigga would have been mad and upset, but me, I jump for joy. Because I bite, I definitely bite a bullet. Uh, uh, what's the word? Bite a bullet, lost a bullet, dodge. I dodged a bullet. That's what I did. I dodged the bullet, you dig? So yeah, man, um, take care of them kids, man. All right? Guys, stop bullshitting. Like I said again, that do what I say, not as I, not as I do, mentality ain't going to cut it. Stand on business, take care of your business, take care of your responsibilities. I don't care what kind of father you are, just be there. And another thing, right, I like discuss. A lot of times we tolerate too much from our partners. We have to stop tolerating so much. We got to stand on business. We got to stand on what we believe in and our principles. If somebody say they're going to do something, make sure they show and prove. They execute on what they say they was going to do. You can't let them get by just pr with broken promises. You have to make sure that your partner is actually living up to their potential and living up to their words. Fellas, you got to live up to your word. Ladies, you have to live up to your word. Don't say you're going to do something and don't do it. We tolerate too much from our relationships because we get comfortable in those relationships and we're scared to lose the person that we love or we scared to lose the person that we're with. Listen, man, you're going to meet new people in life. You might meet even better people, but you'll never know if you're scared to make that transition. You're scared to make the jump. So you got to understand, it's okay to move on and find new people. Throughout my whole life, 
I always find new women and better women than the one I had before. I never, never got so comfortable with a female that I was scared to leave them and I was scared that I wouldn't find nobody else like this person. I always find someone better. Now it's gonna be a hard time for them to find somebody better than me because I'm the best thing since sliced bread. That's how I think and that's what I believe because I put in the work. You know, um, I'm not the best guy in the world, but I'm a great guy. Feel me? I'm not a, I'm not a nice guy, but I'm a good man. So it ain't, it's, it's no big deal for me to leave a female and go on about my life if she's not living up to my standards and living up to the things that I want and the things that I need in order for us to move forward in life. Um, so a lot of you people out there in internet world, Listen, man, look at your partner and ask yourself, has this person been bullshitting me? Are they giving me 10% when they really could be giving me 100% of them? You got to ask yourself, if this, is this person doing less or just enough to not get dumped? You know, you got to really ask yourself that and be real with yourself. And be willing to move on. It's okay. You're going to find someone better. It's going to take a little bit of time. Because there ain't a lot of niggas out here that's qualified. And there ain't a lot of women out here that's qualified. But you'll find someone better. Just be optimistic. Write down your goals and what you want. And they'll appear. Trust me. Just, just have your eyes open for when they do show up. So you're aware of it. It's very important to be aware. Like I always say, you have to be in awareness at every time. All the time, you're moving through life. It's hard for you, I know it's hard, because you're on social media all the time. Yeah, you watch my videos, so I know you're on social media all the time. Don't act like you ain't. Continue to watch my shit, just don't watch some other niggas shit. All right? Just watch my shit. Matter of fact, I'm not gonna be a hater. Watch they shit too. But do it all in moderation. Make sure you're doing more that's going to take you to where you need to be than the opposite. It's important. So, now that I express all of these things to you, I like to always talk about the solution to all of these things that we go through in life. In business and in life, it's all a game. But you got to remember, you write the rules, but you don't create the laws. And what I mean by the laws, the universal laws. Not the laws of man, the universal law. Like the law of gravity. We all know that law exists. How do you know? Walk off of a building. See if you don't drop. But the law of gravity is superseded by the law of lift. Yeah, this explains why airplanes fly, birds fly. The law of lift supersedes the law of gravity. And there's another law, the law of attraction. But the law of attraction is superseded by the law of vibration. So you got to understand, life is a game. You create the rules, but you do not create the laws. You have to do your research and find out the universal laws. And that's how you navigate through life and you'll be able to win in this game of life. But it's important to know the score. In any game that you're playing, you have to know the score. See, in order to win a game, there's two things. Two things you, that's very important for you to know. You got to know the rules and you got to know the score. When a basketball player is going up and down the court, they always look at the score because they can tell if they're up or they're down two points, and that lets him know if he needs to score a three-pointer in order to win the game or a two-pointer in order to tie the game. In your life, you need to know where you're at, in your relationships, in your finances, and everything that you got going on. You got to know the score because you get what you think about most of the time. If you... Know the score, you think about the score, it makes the score goes up. 
let me break it in layman's term. If you know how much money you have in your bank account to the, to, to the exact number, just by you thinking about it so much, it starts to increase the amount. It brings more into your life because you get what you think about most of the time. So life is a game. Know the score. Think about it. And just by thinking it causes the score to raise up. I have to repeat these things because through space repetition is the way you learn. And we are teaching. I want to teach you some things that I've learned. I'm giving you some information that I've used in my life. And that's what it's all about. Motivation, information that puts you in the right location of where you need to be. In the game of life, you got to know the score. And at a point in my life when I was in New York City, I was, uh, like I said, I, I was hustling a lot in New York City. I was really, really on my grind. I, I, I strongly believe New York City made me who I am, made me a man. And um, yeah, I was never content. I always wanted more. And at the time, New York City was in the best place to live because it was very expensive and the quality of living wasn't that good. You know, uh, before I decided to move, I was living in Harlem and um, on the east side and I was renting a room. My roommate was a crackhead, by the way, you know, and, you know, imagine waking up every day and your roommate is a crackhead. In all my beginnings <laughs> throughout my life, I've always been around people that was involved with drugs, you know? Um, drugs was a very important, well, not important, but a very uh, prominent figure in my life. Even when I lived in Far Rockaway, <laughs> and I was renting a room in my, uh, uh, at one of my aunt's downstairs apartment units, the other guy that was renting a room was a heroin addict. He was a heroin dealer and a heroin addict. I'll tell you a, a little bit more about that story a little later, right? But let's get back to this story in Harlem. My roommate is a crackhead. I'm living there, you know, and it's just uncomfortable environment. It's in the hood on the east side between 120, uh, 126 and 125th. And it was very uncomfortable. He was a crackhead. I'm thinking in my mind, like, damn, is my thing safe when I leave this motherfucking unit, this place, this room? Is he going to break in my room and steal my shit? You know, it was just not cool for me to be there. And at that particular time in my life, I needed more. And remember, I was an illegal immigrant, so I couldn't get a regular apartment like most people can. So I had to deal with what I had to deal with. But I needed to move. I needed to go somewhere else where it's a little bit more lenient because New York City at that time, they were strict on renting places to people that didn't have their documents together. So I moved to Atlanta. And Atlanta was a little bit more lenient. You use a CPN, you get right in. They ain't tripping. So that's how I was able to get to uh, in Atlanta and, and live in Buckhead. I had the money, but I didn't have the documentation to, prevent, to provide in order to have the living situation that I needed in New York City. But in Atlanta, like I said, they a little bit more lenient. You get a CPN, you can do your thing. So I lived in Atlanta. I had about 60,000 on me, maybe 70,000. My only objective was to hustle and get this bread up. I needed to get this money. I didn't give a fuck about a car. My BMW, uh, three, C three series BMW that I had, I ended up selling that, buying a, um, a Jeep. That ended up breaking down. I'm in Atlanta with no car. As soon as I got to Atlanta, matter of fact, as soon as I got to Atlanta in the Jeep, that shit ended up breaking down, never working again, and I ended up just not having a car. But at that time, my hustle was in and out of state. I was renting cars all, all the time, so I was in and out of state, moving and grooving. But I was stacking. I was stacking. This was my life because I realized I control everything in my life. I needed to stack because I needed to know I needed more. 70,000, 60,000 wasn't enough for me. Now, to some niggas, that's a lot. They want to, you know, they have 70,000. They're going to live life. They're going to ball out till they fall out. That's cool. But for me, that wasn't enough. 
I needed more. So I'm stacking and stacking and stacking. I'm hustling. I'm driving from one state to the next. I'm moving and grooving. I'm doing my motherfucking thing. That was just how I was moving at the time. And my stash went all the way up to 150. Remember, I told you I knew the score. I knew how much money I had. I knew I only had about 70000 So I wanted about 150. See, in setting the rules up, you got to set the rules up for you to win. See, I could have been thinking about 200000 but nah, let me think about 150 because I'm closer to 150 than I am to 200. So I say that to say, don't be thinking about a million or making 10000 a month when you haven't even made 5000 a month yet. If you only make 3000 a month, think about making 5000 a month. When you make 5000 a month, then start thinking about 10000 a month. You got to take baby steps. You can't jump too far because your dream got to be in the sweet spot. It got to be big enough to excite you, but small enough that you believe and you know that you can get it. So at this particular time, my, my finances was going up. Didn't have a car. Didn't want a car. Didn't think about a car. Wasn't going to no clubs. I went to a club one time in Atlanta around this time. I went to a club one time, and I was so fly, I felt like I was overdressed. I felt extremely overdressed. Because most of the people in Atlanta, they, at that time, they wasn't getting fresh. They wasn't getting fly. Now some New York niggas moved to Atlanta, so now niggas are starting to get their swag right. But at that time, niggas was looking at me like I was, a, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like I was definitely out of place. And I was definitely dipped out fly because, you know, in New York City, we, we the home of the fly. You know what I mean? Drip God to the T. So I was figuring in my mind, I started thinking, damn, I need to dumb it down. But at that time, I'm, you know, I'm like, fuck it. They're going to have to catch up. Why dumb it down? I'm going to be fly anywhere I go. But I didn't really go out that much. I went, into a club. I went out to a club one time. I didn't make no friends. I just focused on my bread. I buckled down. I stayed away from people. Yeah, I had one or two females that I used to deal with, and we would get money together. You know what I mean? Because we was, you know, if I'm hustling and I'm dealing with a female, shit, she's going to be on my hustle. She's going to be what I'm, she's going to be down with what I'm down with. You feel me? And at that time, that's what I was doing. And my money got to where I needed to be. And when the money slowed up, I said, ah, shit, it's time for me to transition and move on to the next. But I say that story to say this. I buckled down. I didn't involve myself with the group of people I was moving and grooving through the city. I wasn't trying to look successful. I was focused on being successful. See, a lot of you niggas out there is too focused on looking successful. And that's what's fucking y'all bred up. So you hustling and you taking your re-up money and you spending it all in the club to show off to another nigga that you bought more bottles than him. Like, why are you trying to impress another nigga that don't know you or don't give a fuck about you? Or why are you trying to impress, I would say impress women, but a lot of you niggas ain't even impressing women now. Y'all doing it to impress niggas. And that's why y'all got the game fucked up. Why would you go out it's your way to spend more money than you have to impress, a, to impress another man? That's, that's, that's weird. Real niggas don't do that. I know I don't do that. So in Atlanta, I didn't care what niggas was driving. I didn't care what they was doing. It wasn't none of my business. All I knew is I got a hundred to two hundred thousand with me. I don't need a car because I'm in and out of state. I'm trying to get to this five hundred thousand. Let me just buckle down, stay out the way while having my way, and get to the paper. That's the mentality some of you niggas have to have. I didn't start buying the things that I have right now in my life until my finances was where I needed to be. I needed fuck you money. Yeah, I needed the money to say fuck you. Yeah, that type of money where I can tell anybody fuck you. Yeah, you got to get you some fuck you money. Because if you don't get you some fuck you money, you're going to have to be you know, doing certain things that go against your morals and your integrity. You know what I mean? You're going to start to be mixing it to fix it. So get your money right. 
Don't focus on looking successful. Focus on being successful. And I say cash is king because cash is king because once you have the money, you are the king of your world. Yeah, we know credit is power. Have credit as well. Don't get it fucked up. I'm not saying not have your credit right. My credit is right. I got a good credit score. I got credit cards, not too much. I'm not big on buying a lot of things with credit because I know I got to pay it off anyway. So why not pay it with cash? The things that I need to use credit card for, I do it. Credit for buying a house, credit for renting a car, credit for renting a hotel. I use credit appropriately. I don't buy, I don't use credit to buy Chanel purses for females. I don't use credit to buy, you know, um, a new outfit. I don't use credit to buy jewelry. I pay all that shit with cash. Because at the end of the day, you use your credit cards, you got to, like me, I got business credit cards as well. So if I buy something with my business credit card, I put the cash back on it anyway the same day or the next day. So don't let credit fuck you up. Because a lot of niggas with credit... They go on a date with a female or use their credit card, it declines. Because you don't have the money. So you fronting and you faking. That's why my name is Liquid Cash, because nothing really than Liquid Cash. Cash is king. You could have a good credit limit, a high credit limit. I don't care if you have a $100,000 credit limit on your American Express or whatever card you got. Do you have $100,000 in your possession. Can you go to the bank and pull out $100,000? Can you go to your stash and get $100,000? If you can't do that, nigga, you broke. I'm just letting you niggas know. We're keeping it all the way 100. You broke. If you can't do that. If you can't take six months off from work and live comfortably, you broke. That's just what it is. That's a reality people got to live with. So now you know that where you at in the scoreboard... You ain't got what you, you ain't, you, you don't have what you need. So it's time for you to apply yourself and focus and buckle down and get on your motherfucking job. That's the reality of it. Know the score. Don't try to look successful. Be successful. That's what I'm trying to give back to the youth to understand. Don't make the mistakes that I've made growing up. Because I made a lot of them. But I learned along the way. So I'm hoping that somebody's watching this and picking up this game. Know the score. Know where you at in your relationship. Know what you need to work on. Know where you need to improve on. Know where you at in your finances. Know where the number is at, where the number is at in your bank account. And know what you need to do to get to where you need to go. If you got five and you want ten, you know you got to focus on that ten. If you're not taking your lady out, giving her the energy and the time that she deserves, you know you're lacking in that department because you focus on other things, hanging out with the homies, going to the club, partying and bullshitting, you might have to buckle down, relax, and spend more time with your lady. Because I always tell niggas, pay attention to the business that pays you. Keep the main thing the main thing. If your lady is taking care of you, she's cooking, she's cleaning, she's catering to you, she's supportive, she's uh, lovable, she's affectionate, you might have to spend a little bit more time and affection and attention with her. Not the homies, because the homies are not going to be there for you when you think they're going to be there for you. It's going to be that woman that's going to hold you down. It's going to be that female that's going to be in your corner. The niggas is only there for the main, you know, for the main cause. When things go south and things go bad for you, the niggas ain't going to give you shit because they ain't going to have shit to give you because they live in life fast. Not understanding that you got to take it easy. You got to take it slow. You got to pace yourself. Comparison is a thief of joy. Don't compare what you have done to what others have done. Compare what you have done to what you could have done. See, that's important. Anything you look at in life, you can find something to feel bad about, 
or feel good about. You could look at someone on Instagram and say, they doing better than you. Shit, I need to step my game up. And you could start thinking negative and you could start doubting yourself. Doubt could sink a ship. Doubt and go without. Believe and receive. I'm going to say that again. Doubt can sink a ship. Doubt and you will go without. Believe and you will receive. So don't compare yourself or your life to nobody who's doing better than you. Always be mindful of how you perceive certain things because perception is reality. A lot of niggas out there faking it. A lot of niggas out here faking it, man. Ain't too many niggas getting no money, man. It ain't too many people getting money out here, man. They might look the part because perception is reality. When they're on the gram, it looks good. It looks cute. They look fly. They look like they're really successful. But really, down, they down and out. They're on their last, le- they last leg. They can't buy luck right now. They fucked up. It's only 0.1% that's out here really getting money on a level where you... Where you could be like, okay, this person is doing good for themselves. Check your circle. Do a head count. How many of them niggas making six figures a year? I'll wait. Ladies, this go for y'all too. How many women in your circle is making six figures a year? If you want to know what's going on in the economy, do a head count. Check the people in your circle. How many of those people are making six figures a year? Not too many. So that's to tell you, you're doing better than a lot of people. You're doing good, but you could be doing better. So don't judge yourself based on what someone else is doing. Judge yourself based on what you could be doing. And you could be doing more. Don't cheat yourself. Treat yourself. You know you could be doing more. See, I know I could be doing more. I know I could do more videos a week. But I decided to do one a week. Because the more I see traction and support, then I'll give give more of my time and my energy. One a week is good because I get to focus on the music. Because that's what I really, truly Love doing the music. I love doing this as well, but this took time. I grew into this. This is my humanitarian act. I want to give back. This is this, this, this is my good Samaritan <laughs> contribution to society. So this is why I do this. But by doing this, that creates more attention on brand awareness. And that allows more people to focus on the music, focus on the apparel. So it all works together. Remember what I said, life is a game. Play to win. You create the rules. So why not set the rules up for you to win? You could have different things that you're doing, but if they're leading towards one common goal, then you're on the right track. The content that I produce, the music that I produce, the clothing that I produce, they all leading to one common goal. And that's what? To get the bag. You know what I mean? To get this 55 fucking million that I want. Why 55? I don't know. I like the number five. It's a number of change. You know what I mean? And when I reach the 55 million, maybe I'll want 100 million. Or maybe I'll chill back, relax, be on the beach in the Bahamas, cooling. But until then, we grinding every day. We hustling every day. We making moves every day. We doing something that's going to take us further and further towards our goal. You could be doing more. So do more. Don't cheat yourself. Like I said, treat yourself. Because it's all about a quality of living. You want to live a high quality lifestyle. Because when it's all said and done, when this shit is over, it's over. You don't get a do over. You don't get to live life twice. You only get to live life once. So why not live it to the fullest? Why not buy the things that you want, 
live where you want, eat what you want, and appreciate every motherfucking day you wake up on this God green earth and give thanks to Mother Nature for providing this God green earth for you to live on. Be thankful and grateful every day. That's how you get more. So you live it up. To all my young kings, all my young queens, live it up. Grind, put in that work to get all the things you desire and all the things you want because it's possible. You can be, do, and have anything and everything you want long as you put the work and the effort behind it. Your reward in life is, is in exact proportion as your efforts. Don't expect to have more than you got if you're doing less. It don't work that way. It just don't work that way. I wish it, I wish it did. I would love to clip my fingers like that. And I can have everything I desire. But I have to put in some work. I have to contribute my time, my effort. And I have to have the willingness. The willingness to learn. The willingness to accept change. Life is a game. Yes. We are all playing this game. You are creating everything in your life. You are the one. You are the conductor. You are, every, you are, you are it. You know what I mean? The outside thing that you see and the outside thing that you are are two pulls of the same magnet. So why not pull everything you want to you? Everything you desire, everything you want, pull that to you. You want to know how to do it? <sighs> Go on a DM. Click the consultation button. Set up a consultation with me. We'll talk about it. We'll discuss it. I'll give you the techniques that I use on a daily basis. You know what I mean? There's it's, it's, it's a lot of people out there giving away some game. But I got an uncommon information that you ain't never heard before. And if you heard it, Please let me know where you got it from. Because a lot of this shit, <laughs> I had to search far and wide for it. I had to read thousands and thousands of books. I had to listen to thousands and thousands of, you know, content. So you got to understand, man. We all playing in this game of life. We set the rules, but we don't create the laws. And, that, and I mean the universal laws. Learn, study. The more information you have, the more you'll be qualified and ready to take on the game and win. You could win at this game too. Set the rules up so you win every day. Because success creates confidence. Confidence creates activity. Activity creates habits and habits creates results. So set the rules up for you to win. Every success that you have throughout the day creates more confidence. So for me, I wake up and I say, I'm going to the gym today. That's a success. Whether I do that and nothing else, that's a successful day because I made a decision to go to the gym. Matter of fact, I'm going to work on my business idea. All I have to do is make a few calls and that's a successful day. One step. Don't have to be a big leap. Just one little small step in the right direction contributes to a, success, a successful day. Success creates confidence. Confidence creates activity. Activity creates habits. Habits creates results. So make it small. Make it easy. Don't make it complicated. Make it easy enough for you to do it every day. Because the more and more you do it, the more and more you get confident, the more and more you start to produce more activity, and the more and more you see the results that you're looking for. Anyway, this was a long episode. I enjoyed it. I look good. I feel good. I hope y'all could... <laughs> Feel my vibration through this camera lens. I know y'all can. This episode is Let's Keep It 100. This is part one. I might do a part two. 
I don't know. Y'all let me know. Should it be a part two? Just keep it all the way in 100. Y'all know what it is. It's yours truly, Liquid Cash. Let me leave y'all with a quote. Y'all already heard this one before, but I'm going to say it again because I love it. It's not what you eat, but what you digest that make you strong. It's not what you learn, but rather what you remember that makes you wise. And it's not what you earn, but what you save that brings you wealth. Like, subscribe, and share. It's yours truly, Liquid Cash. I think this is my longest episode yet. Hey, and guess what? My new EP, Pirate City, is on the way. Be on the lookout for that. Yeah, we working. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know what it is. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Pirates of the Caribbean. Niggas can't fuck with me, man. That boy. It's liquid cash. I need it all out in the stash. I'ma get rich or I'ma get deported. Riding cross country, my four tours.